Welcome to Belstra Milling. My name's Tim Belstra, and uh, Belstra Milling is pretty excited because we just recently celebrated our 60th birthday. Who'd have thought? With me today is Mark Zukowski. Mark has been with us for 16 years, and Mark is probably one of the most educated people on our mill. Mark has, has his handprint on almost every project that has been done here. So if there's ever anything you want to know about Belstra Milling, Mark is a man to give you an answer. So today, we're going to show you in some series a little bit about what goes into the making of animal feed because we are part of the food chain. America does a wonderful job of producing safe, abundant, and very affordable food. And so we are part of that because we provide the animal feed that helps produce the final product. Roughly about 70% of what we make at, Man at Belstra Milling is swine feed and roughly about 30% is for dairy. So here we go, let's have some fun. This is our grain receiving facility. Uh, we are standing on a rice lake scale deck. It actually weighs the truck in. Uh, we scale the truck in. He unloads his corn, dumps it right through the pit. And as soon as he's done unloading, we scale him out and he leaves. We usually unload a thousand bushel of corn every eight minutes. Uh, all the corn here at Belstra Milling is used. We are the end user. We purchase it through wheat field grain. We store 400,000 bushels of corn here at the mill. Uh, every bit of it's used in some feed ingredient that we produce. Um, we have a rotary scalper that cleans the corn on, on the way in. Uh, corn is stored and it's reclaimed through uh, elevators, uh, drag conveyors, and put into the bins above the corn processing area for, for further use and, uh, where we break it down into finer particles for feed production. The area that we're going to look at now is our corn processing facility. We have four uh, different pieces of equipment in that building. Uh, two 12 by 42 triple pair Ross Camp roller mills. They're actually roller grinders. They bring down the uh, corn down to 600 micron, which we use for dairy uh, ingredients and for uh, an ingredient for hog, hog feeds. Uh, we take whole corn and we break it down into a, a cracked corn and final, final production is the 600 microns. Uh, each pair of rolls reduces the size of the grain down to the fin finest one we can get, which is rolled corn. Uh, also up there is a cracker crimper. That's a two pair, 12 by 36 Ross Camp roller mill, and it actually cracks and crimps. It'll crack corn, so uh, down to a process that we can use in calf feed and then we'll crimp oats. It'll take a whole oat, crack it open so that the animal's able to digest it better. And then uh, we'll put that into uh, finished feed for calf starters and horse feeds. Uh, there's also a G8 Prater hammer mill that uh, hammers corn, or we use it to reduce the size of a soybean hull pellet. Uh, it makes it more digestible for whatever animal's using that. Roller mills we see here on the picture on the wall are, two of them are Ross Camp Champion 12 by 42, three pair high roller mills. Each roller mill is 185 horsepower each, has two motors on it, and it's able to process about 30 tons of corn an hour down to 600 micron finish. Each roller mill was brought in from Kansas. We refurbished them and placed them back into use. Uh, we have two 12 by 36s, I'm sorry, two 12 by 42s, and one 12 by 36 roller mill we use for a cracker crimper. Each, uh, each has a specific process. The cracker crimper is only a two pair high roller mill. It either cracks corn or crimps out, and it further reduces the size of the grain, more, making it more digestible for the animal when he, we put it in their feed. The rolls behind me here are an example of what we have. Uh, the triple pair roller mill has three sets of these rolls. Each roll 
the back roll turns at a certain RPM and the front roll turns 5% faster to create a rolling grinding effect and it helps to reduce the size of the corn down to 600 microns. This is our bagging line, it's fairly new to us. It's a Taylor APO bag net weight filling machine. It has two augers in it. It fills 50 pound bags to uh, within a half a pound. Once the bag is filled, it drops and it's folded, tag put on, goes through the fish fine sewing machine for closing. And we do use tape to help seal the bag up. We do use a lot of dust collection at this process because of the feed ingredients that we bag. Uh, one of our goals on the renovation was to make the bagging conditions a lot more comfortable for the people bagging. We bag about eight bags per minute, uh, all 50 pound bags. We bag finished hog feeds, we bag dairy supplemental bag, pellets cracked corn, crimped oats, uh, whatever the customer would uh, like to have in a 50, bag, 50 pound bag we could do at this spot of our facility. This is our tote warehouse. We also do st store finished bags. Uh, all the totes you see in here are used in the production of feed. 95% of these are for dairy supplements. The other 5% are for uh, pig rations. We do store calcium, dical, urea. We have extra loads in tote sacks just as a safety barrier so that if a truckload of an ingredient doesn't show up, uh, we're able to still keep production going. Um, we store about 400, ton, or 400 tons of, of toted ingredient in the warehouse. The bags you see here are finished bags that will be sent out to the various farms and dairies. Uh, they're all produced here off the 50 pound bag line um, and hauled out on our van trailer for delivery. All the ton tote sacks that you've seen stacked in the warehouse are brought into the depackaging area and they're cut open, they go into the conveyor, the conveyor takes them over into the mill and then they're put into an ingredient bin above the mixer. Uh, this enables some of the products that we get in are only available in tote sacks, and this is where they're dumped. Some are available, other ingredients are available in bulk, and that they're received in the truck dump. So this gives us some flexibility as to where we dump things and how they're packaged, and it makes us more flexible as far as if the supplier only supplies totes or he may only supply bulk or bulk, whatever. Um, but this gives us some flexibility as to how we receive our ingredients. We're now standing in the ingredient receiving area. Above me is the 75 ton rolled corn loadout bin. It allows us to load our semi trucks full of rolled corn to take out to the dairy farms for uh, their use. Uh, we also load out rolled corn and deliver to other customers that require that product. We also do use this scale where I'm standing on to receive ingredients. The ingredient truck pulls on the scale, weighs in, pulls ahead to dump his ingredients, and once the ingredients are emptied out of his truck, he backs onto the scale, weighs out empty, and then leaves. This is our ingredient receiving pit. It has a dust collection system on it from Air Lanco. It's a downdraft system. It's 12,000 CFM. It creates a downdraft on the pit so that the dust doesn't get airborne. Uh, the ingredient we're unloading currently is soda bicarb. It's just like your box uh, Arm & Hammer baking soda, but we get it in a 25-ton truck. The uh, ingredients are received through a drag, takes it over to the leg that puts it over into an ingredient bin above the mixer. This is our feed loadout alleyway. Above me there's 28 overhead bins, a little over 300 tons of storage. All the finished feed ends up in a bin overhead and then it's loaded into a truck. The truck driver backs his truck in, gets his order ticket, weighs out each batch of feed that he has to load on his truck and puts it into one of the eight compartments that's on his truck. Uh, we also do load, roll, we load out 
uh, dairy feeds out of the bins above me. They can either go in one of a, a Belcher milling truck or a customer pickup truck. Um, whatever, whatever the order calls for, that's what we try to accommodate. This is our main mixing area. Above me is all the ingredient bins that we've been talking about. All, there's 400 tons of ingredients stored above that discharge by a motor and an auger into the scale hopper. The scale hopper weighs out each ingredient and then as after the batching process is complete, dumps it into a twin shaft Scott twin ribbon mixer. It's then mixed for 45 seconds at a dry mix cycle. The liquids are act, added. After the liquids are added, it mixes for another 45 seconds and then it's dumped into a surge drag in the basement. The surge drag takes it away, puts it into a finished feed loadout bin where we've seen the truck and it's loaded out for delivery onto the farm. Uh, we do approximately 400 tons a day of a finished feed. Uh, it's, all take, it's all done through here. All the bags set up around here are hand added ingredients that are dumped into the mixer for the mixing process. Behind me is our 30 bin micro ingredient system. It has vitamins, minerals, and medications in each, each tub. It's controlled by the computer for batching. Uh, the order calls for a certain ingredient. It'll weigh that ingredient down to the tenth of a pound. It, uh, it has the inclusion rate of probably 20 pounds of a certain ingredient or down to a tenth of a pound, whatever the formula calls for. And it's part of the batching process once the micro ingredients are all uh, satisfied to what this, the computer has asked for. It'll dump onto an alt conveyor that takes it over to the mixer and it's mixed with the main ingredients. This is the main mixing area or mixing room. The, all the ingredient receiving is controlled from within. All the batching computers are, are inside the room there and they control all the batching of all the four different scales we have. All the corn processing automation is taken care of out of this room along with all the pelleting automation. It's all uh, monitored with the screens behind me. Uh, the operators in the room can see everything that's going on in the whole plant. Behind me is uh, four premix ingredient bins, the square bins behind me. They uh, have swine premix, dairy premix, uh, baby big premix. Uh, they're all minor ingredients that go into the mixing process. They're about two to three hundred pound inclusions each. Uh, once the computer has been satisfied with the weight, it conveys it over to the main mixer for uh, mixing into the Scott Twin Chap mixer. To, my, to your right is two liquid tanks, liquid Metasmart and liquid Alamet. These tanks are, uh, are fed to the mixer and our means of getting liquid into the diet. Uh, they're liquid methionines and they uh, help the animal digest Behind me is our wet feed mixing area. We call it the tender blend. Above there's six bins, cracked corn, crimped oats, pellets, horse premixed pellets, calf pellets. They're all ingredients used in a wet feed process. The bins are volumetrically controlled into the tender blend mixer. All the dry ingredients end, end up in the start of the mixer and as they proceed through a 30 foot long paddle mixer halfway through soybean oil and molasses are added and by the time it gets to the far end of the mixer it's a complete mixed feed which is either put into a tote filler a 50 pound bag filler or it can go into a bulk truck for delivery out to the farm we mainly produce horse pre -mix, or horse keeper calf starters or some sort of a beef starter show calf feeds are all done back here in the WEM. Thank you. The pelleting process consists of a complete feed put over the pellet mill. It goes through a conditioner that mixes the pellet 
mash feed with steam, then it goes through the pellet mill die. The rolls press the mash feed out through the die in form of a pellet. The pellet mill generates anywhere between 160 and 180 degrees. And once the pellet goes through the die, it is 180 degrees and then needs to be cooled off through a cooler. And once it goes through the cooler, it goes across the screener. The spines are taken out, reintroduced into the pellet mill, and the cooled pellets go out to finish feed bin for loadout. The pellet mill is a 150 horse California pellet mill, and it's able to produce about 10 tons an hour.